Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. I'm your host, Jared Moon. The Garage Gym Athlete Podcast is a result of my desire to build better humans, unequivocal coaches, and autonomous athletes. I've spent the last several years obsessing over program design, nutrition, and every other way you can optimize human performance. This podcast distills the latest scientific research with what I've learned and blends it with the not-so-scientific field of mental toughness. We are here to build you into a dangerously effective athlete. If you enjoy this podcast, you can find out more about our training at garagegymathlete.com. And if you want to pursue more into the field of coaching and programming, head to endof3fitness.com. Thanks for listening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? Hey, how's it going? It's going well, man. We have Sandy Clark. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well. Thank you. Yeah, let's, uh, we're going to jump right into it. Um, so I want to know, uh, just get updates. So we've had you on before. Yes. Um, uh, and you know, I know you were juggling a lot then and that's why I love to get these updates because the real thing about life in general is just, you know, so getting the, the real world update of like, okay, yes, you're an athlete, but also you're juggling a lot of things in life. That's, that's what I find most interesting about this pod- podcast. So give us uh, an update of, you know, how life has been, uh, what you've been up to. Okay. Well, since the last time I was on, I actually started grad school. I got a new job. I switched grad schools yeah, it's it's kind of been crazy, kind of been crazy. But um, I started out in grad school for a master's in psychology. And then after about a semester, I got a job in our new town library as the library director. And so I had decided to switch my master's to get a master's of library and information science. Um, and that has actually since changed since this last semester. (laughs) I'm planning on going to grad school for something completely different. So, um, but yeah, it's been a lot of school, full-time school, full-time job, full-time kids, you know, and then there's this virus and everybody ends up at home and it's, yeah, it's been a, it's been a juggling match. That's crazy. How are you fitting fitness into all that? You know, that's actually been interesting because when I was on last time, usually I worked out when my daughter was napping. Well, eventually your kids get old enough and they can't nap anymore. I know, they lose a nap and it screws the parents up. Yeah, it (laughs) screws the parents up. So I had to get used to working out. Usually it was after work because I was working in the morning through the afternoon. And so I was working out after work. But when summer comes, that gets a little warm. And so it became mornings and I'm not a morning person. So it's been interesting. Yeah, that's uh, that's tough to juggle. So um, give us a, an update on your space. Where are you training right now? Uh, well, I was training at a gym. Our garage is not insulated yet, which makes it very, very cold in the winter and very, very hot in the summer. So I've been trying to do it at the gym, but a lot of it has been outside because I've done a lot more, um, distance running since the last time I was on as well. So a lot of my stuff can be done outside and then I can throw in the weightlifting, you know, in the garage or at the gym. Nice. Nice. And, uh, so you, were you working on building out the garage gym? I can't recall for, for last time. Um, or is it just like a, a migratory thing? Like you go where the weather allows? Well, we were in an apartment. And when we were in the apartment, our garage was insulated. So it really wasn't a problem. Um, and then we bought a house. We bought a house in December of 2018. And the garage is not insulated. So we've been trying to kind of work it around so that we work out there as much as we can. And then when it gets too cold, we get memberships to the gym. And if I remember correctly, how cold is too cold? Because I think it's not like, oh, Joe, 60, 60 degrees in San Diego. I know you're not in San Diego right now, but uh, how cold does it get for you guys? Well, in the winter, we get to like 40 below zero without the wind. <laughs> there you go. I knew it was something brutal. From yes. Our yes. Same, same thing. thing. <laughs> but I usually, I usually will stay in the garage until the temperature in the garage falls to about 10. And then I'm like, okay, it's starting to get a little bit cold. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's intense. I don't mean, there's, there's like mental toughness and then there's like, okay, well, this is not even possible. Like how, how layered up do I have to be? Am I going to actually yeah. die when, when I go outside <laughs> to work out things you have to start actually considering at some point? Yeah. When you can see your breath and it makes icicles, that's usually when it's a sign that it's too cold. I would sell a lot of my possessions just to get insulation installed and some 
<laughs> not about that life. <laughs> Joe would just leave. He's like, I'm going to start life over somewhere. Yeah. Nope. Sorry, Liz. <laughs> See you in two years. Uh, what are some of your goals right now? Um, actually, I am in the process of training for an ultra marathon. Wow. Um, so yeah, that is my big goal. I've, and I've actually never run a marathon in a race setting. I have, well, I actually have never run a marathon. I've never run 26.2 miles. Um, let's just do it twice. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. just have a ultra. Why not? Yeah. But I have run 20. So I'm kind of like, well, we're just adding, you know, to a 50 K you're just adding 11 miles more. So I'm kind of trying to build up my base this summer and um, I had registered for one, but now it's virtual because nobody's having races in person. So I have to complete it by the end of August, which is a very hot month, but I was like, well, I guess we can, we can make this happen. Well, at least you can get your training in now. Like I, I'm, I always love it when the, the weather starts to get good. Well, I mean, now that I'm in Baltimore, but you actually run and train outside, which is fantastic. So at least you can get that in, but you know, put on humidity and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if I was trying to do this in the winter, I don't, I don't know if I could do all that. <laughs> yeah. My, my hundred mile bike race was canceled as well. And they want to do virtual. So I'd like to hear how they're, what are they doing for you? Because they didn't give me a lot of feedback. They were just kind of like, um, yeah, do it on your own now virtual. And I'm like, I, I don't think I can fit a hundred miles in a, in a day. Like if I'm not going to a sanctioned event just with family and everything else. So I don't know how I'm going to get it done. What, what were some of the parameters they gave you for tackling it virtually? That Same. was exactly what they told <laughs> yeah, us. Right. They were like, do it, send us, you know, proof that you did it and send us something from an app that shows that you actually did run the miles and we'll send you your stuff. And I was like, oh, okay. And I mean, my town is small. It's like a mile and a half north to south. And I'm like, where am I going to fit, you know, even a loop, you know, because I figured that's probably safest, but how am I going to fit this, you know, I'm going to end up running like a loop seven times. And it's like, oh, I don't know. You used to do like a down and back just out in the middle of nowhere and just have like your, your pit crew, like in the, the Tour de France, like hand you bottles of water from like yeah. a, a bike or something. Yeah. And a lot of our highways are truck routes, you know, we're out in the middle of the oil field and I'm like, do I really want to put myself on a gravel road with an oil truck? Probably not. Probably no. not. And that's what I was actually so if you're doing loops, I mean, the bad, the bad is the, the mental side of it. The good is the just talking about like a pit crew. That, I mean, that's, what's actually kind of, I was thinking about with this hundred mile bike race, especially in a pandemic. It's not like I can invite a bunch of people over to do it, but at the same time, the only other person who would facilitate handing me bottles of water or whatever would be Emily, you know, and she's, she's got, we have three kids. She'd have the kids if I was doing a hundred mile bike race. So fueling was, was my main thing. I'm like, how am I going to do this? like realistically, if I wanted to tackle it. So do you have a plan for that? Or are you just going to like hit, is your, is your house part of the loop and you can just like hit it or like, what are you going to do? My house is not part of the loop. Oh, um, all right. <laughs> just, just because it kind of makes for a funny loop. You know, I've run a couple half marathons here in town virtually since the pandemic started. And, um, it, that's interesting too, because you're like going up and down streets and I'm like, man, my neighbors probably think I'm really crazy now. You know, if I'm not walking around with sandbags and barbells, I'm running past their house seven times. <laughs> um, but we do have a dam in the north end of town and I figured I could work that into it. And the good thing about that is our new church is being built up there. I was like, well, I'm just going to talk to the pastor and be like, I'm going to leave my stuff here. And as I oh, go nice. past the church, I'll just... Yeah, I'm pretty sure he'll say yes. If he says no, I'm going to be like, I don't know what I'm going to do now. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he'll allow it. You're not. Yeah. Like, and the good thing about crazy. that too, is the hospital is like right next door. Oh, so should anything <laughs> bad happen, I mean, I need <laughs> left for refueling, right for medical attention. That's it's, right. it's like a real race. Right. It's, yep. uh, <laughs> it's pretty legit. At least um, you can choose like, wait to choose like the best weather day instead of just like race day, how it just might have a terrible weather. You can just be like, mm, no, next week looks a lot better for this. Yeah, actually that is what I've done. I've picked a couple days and I'm like, if this day it's, if it's raining, I'm not doing it. Cause I don't like wet socks, you know? And I'm like, okay, so we we've, we've got a couple days that we can work with. Now, I'd like to hear um, transitioning from what you were doing because you're doing a, a lot more endurance training than typical, yeah. than normal. Like how have you found that transition and do you enjoy it? I, I actually do enjoy it. I've always been a runner and I've always been a distance runner. That's just, I found out my freshman year in high school that I can't hurdle. And so I gave up hurdling and I went to distance right away. And I found it, it was just where I belonged. And um, for a long time, I gave it up because when I 
went low carb. When I found out I was gluten intolerant, I actually just took it full-fledged keto. I was like, if I can't have bread, I'm just not going to eat any carbs. And it was really hard because when, at the time when I was part of that community, you know, everybody was like, you don't run, you don't do, you know, all this extra endurance stuff. You just lift weights because that's what you have to do. And I was like, okay. And so I kind of fell for this mentality and it became more about strength training, which is fine, you know, but I really missed the running part. And so now it's more, how can I do both? And so it's less about, can I squat twice my body weight and more about how can I fit the strength aspect into my running to make my running better? And can my running make that part of my life better? And I think they do. I think they can complement each other. So are you still keto? I am now just low carb. Um, okay. And, you know, I'm kind of happy with that. I found out when I upped my endurance that uh, carbs are kind of nice. So. Yeah. And that's what I don't think anybody has the answer when they're like, and I, I hate it when people pretend to, because, uh, you know, I tried to go super low carb keto and just had an awful experience with it because I was training at too high of intensity at that time with Murph, uh, you know, every week and everything to be able to sustain the activity at the level I wanted to sustain. I needed more carbohydrates, but you also find if you're relatively low body fat and, you know, high activity, you can eat a lot more carbohydrates and st even still be in ketosis. And so this like, you should only lift weights or you can only do this or you should never eat like these blanket statements don't help the individual athlete. Right. And I think, I think you've probably just found what works best for you. And, yeah. uh, how, how do you, you know, what is it? Zach bitter, you know, he's the guy, uh, for endurance specific, like events like you're doing, he holds like world records and everything else. We had him on the better humanology talk podcast and he talks a lot about metabolic fl flexibility. So he, he's super low carb. And then he just, he ups his carbohydrate intake a lot, uh, leading up to, and then during a race, do you have a plan to do something like that? Yeah. And actually that's what I do now. Just, you know, day to day, if I know I'm going to be running longer, you know, that's the day that I, I know I can have more carbs and I probably need more carbs. Um, you know, and then just every other day, I, I just kind of feel it out. But what I did when I went off of keto was I, I worked it in really slowly and I kind of figured out where is my threshold, you know, because I didn't want to just jump in and be like, I'm eating 400 grams of carbohydrates today and just be sick, you know? So I just, I upped it little by little each day and I found out where it worked that I felt the best in terms of endurance training. Um, then the rest of the days, you know, it's just as long as you're eating, in my opinion, as long as you're eating for what your body needs, it, it's going to work out. It's going to work out. I agree so much with that statement. Okay. Uh, I want to know if some of these answers have changed. Um, what's the hardest workout you've ever done? So it was just this weekend. I ran 21.75 miles in my town alone and it was all mental. This was totally a mental thing, but I was like, you know, I got to about 10 and I was like, I'm done. You know, I, I can't do this anymore. I cannot keep running loops. And I was like, well, how are you going to do an ultra Sandy? You know? So I had to keep pushing myself to do it. And man, I got tired faster because of the mental aspect of it. You know, I was just like, oh, my legs hurt. My arms hurt. Everything hurts. I have a headache. And I was like, none of that really is true. You know, it really doesn't. It, I'm sure that they were sore, but I think it was totally a mental thing. Um, yeah, I would have to say that was the hardest one I've done thus far. Yeah. Your brain starts throwing up a lot of excuses when it doesn't want to do what you're doing anymore, which yeah, it's always a hard battle. Um, so what was it? I mean, was there anything in particular? I know you, you said you met, you were kind of talking to yourself like, Hey, how are you going to do this race later? But like, was there anything that got you through? Cause I think a lot of people get 10 miles into a 20 mile run, 21 mile run. And they're like, no, nah, just not today. Like, how did you actually finish it? Like, what'd you tell yourself to, to finish it? I tend to be a little bit mean to myself. I, I'm not even going to lie. When it comes to something like that, I'm like, shut up, just do it, you know? And so that's kind of where I was at. I was like, just shut up, just run, you know, just run because you know, eventually you're going to get to that point where you're not even feeling anything. And it, that happens for me, normally on a regular run, that'll happen around like seven miles, you know, where I'm just like, oh, I feel really good. Well, this time it didn't happen till about 15 and then it died really quick. But I, I think I just had to be, it was a little bit of tough love, you know, it was like, you know, you can do this. So just do it, just be quiet and just do it. And yeah. And then I got done and I was like, oh yeah, this will be a piece of cake. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It's always better when you're finished. Yes. Uh, you have a sure. lot worse mental talk, or I know I would, if I actually quit and then 
dealing with myself later after that yeah. would, would be bad. Uh, all right. In your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? <laughs> you need to run in a small town <laughs> for like 15 miles. I, I think anything that pushes you past your comfort zone. And for me as an extrovert, I need some people contact, which is why having the gym during the winter is kind of nice because I meet a lot of other people and I get to discuss their goals and we get to talk about, you know, different things. Um, so that's really nice for me. And so something like a long distance run when you're an extrovert in a small town where all you see is yourself over and over, you know, it, 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 it was tough for me because I was kind of like, there's nobody to, to help motivate me. And right now I need that, you know, nor I can motivate myself, but at some points in a run, I really needed some motivation and nothing was working. I was listening to podcasts. I was listening to music and I was like, this all just sucks, you know, but, uh, <laughs> nothing's working. Yeah. yeah. And so you've got to find, you've got to find what makes you comfortable and then do what you're not comfortable with for a long time. For me, that was things like squatting and deadlifting because I had this picture in my mind of becoming this like super buff woman. I was like, nobody's going to want to see that. I don't want to see that. And so I had to push past that and realize that unless I was, you know, using steroids, it probably wasn't going to happen. So find your comfort zone and get out of it. And that is going to build mental toughness. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's a big reason why I've done like the, a marathon and hundred mile bike race. Cause I don't really consider myself an endurance athlete. And so that gets me like really uncomfortable, really fast, you know, and pretty early in the race or, or event or whatever it is. So, and I, I think that's good advice just for anybody. If you're looking to build your mental toughness, like put some shoes on and just start running until you don't want to anymore and then try to go further. And yeah. that'll be a great way to like figure out what, I mean, it's a, a simple way to meet yourself. If you will, your head will quit before your body will Our my track coaches in high school and college used to always say that they're like, your mind is going to tell you to quit way before your body is ready to quit, you know, and you just have to push past it. You have to realize that's what's going on and you can usually get past it. That's awesome. Now, if you only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? I'm not going to say running shoes, even though that is important. <laughs> I'm, I'm sticking. I'm sticking by with my with my answer from before. It would totally be a weighted vest, which I still don't own. Can you believe it? I still don't. <laughs> have one. Yeah, that's. Um, you should definitely pull a trigger on one of those. I think. Uh, yeah could increase your running game too. Well, I had gone somewhere and tried on several and I have a short torso. And so nothing was comfortable. It was all sitting on my hip bones funny. And so that's been my excuse. I'm like, well, I haven't found one that's comfortable yet. I'm, sh <laughs> I'm sure they exist. I just need to do it. <laughs> yeah. There are some that I can't even remember what they're called now, but they, they basically sit up on your chest. It's almost like a half vest. It's like up real high. And then it, it ends like right there. I can't remember the name of it, but those are that's interesting because the uh, the hydration pack that I got that that the new one I got is just like that. It's much shorter than a lot of them that that we had had in years past. You know, in years past, you were basically wearing a coat, and now it's just like <laughs> this little vest. You know, and it's really super comfortable. So I'll have to look into it. It's awesome. So since you've moved, what is something you would want to get added to your gym? On uh, what's on the top of your wish list? insulation does that count yeah um, <laughs> yeah that's what i would yeah, pick yeah yeah and you know it's not even a matter of like buying insulation it's a matter of getting it done my husband works nights and so our schedules are really kind of kind of weird and we're not going to pay somebody to do it why would you pay somebody to insulate your garage you know even if you don't have the time we're like no we'll get to it we'll get to it um but if it wasn't insulation if i needed something else probably more kettlebells because we only have one and I, I miss having one that's lighter. The one we have is 30 pounds. So, you know, that's a big guy. That's a good way to get stronger. Only give yourself one weight that you have to work with and yeah, got to use it for yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah. Either more kettlebells or more dumbbells. We have a, an adjustable dumbbell set right now. And that's actually kind of a pain in the butt. So I think if we could have a rack with more options of dumbbells and kettlebells, that's what I would add. That's awesome. All right. Now, a lot of garage gym athletes out there listening to this, what would your best advice for them be? You know, again, I think that I would stick with what I said last time. Sometimes you just have to tell yourself to do the beginning, you know, do five minutes, do just get started. Cause usually once you get started, you can keep going. And then I would add to it. I would say, when you want to quit, 
do five minutes more and see if you still want to quit. Because a lot of times you can work past that, that point in your head where you want to quit. Love it. All right, Sandy. Yeah. It's uh, awesome. Been awesome catching up with you. Thanks for coming on. Um, and I appreciate it. So thanks for, for being here and uh, t- chatting with us today. Yeah. Thank you for having me again. It was good to, good to be on again. Thanks for listening to the Garage Gym Athlete podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, The Garage Gym Athlete, or you can even get featured on the Garage Gym Athlete podcast. Thanks for listening.